Commission of Inquiry into issues that went down Brazil 2014 as far as Ghana's uh, participation is concerned. Now, many Ghanaians might be applauding the World Cup 2014 Commission of Inquiry, but uh, continue to wonder why two high-profile uh, persons have broken down uh, during the, uh, the session at, at the commission. Uh, first, it was Swiss Minister Elvis Ifriyankra, and then came in the former Adenta Member of Parliament, uh, Edu uh, sorry, both men were emotional as questions were put to them. What causes this? The questions or perhaps the atmosphere? Uh, before we get into that conversation, let's listen to this. The committee, you know, and then we don't, none of us, apart from Fred Darko, who was a member, who, was, who had a, a, was a coordinator with the ministry. And it is in that capacity as a coordinator, and you see, and I'm not me lazy as a committee. So none, none, no member of that committee, apart from Fredako, who was a coordinator with the ministry, had to spend, like, had one city to spend. So where did we go wrong? And where did we brought money to us? Which one of us went to sign for one CD with the ministry? Say, you compare ice water, back water, you know, my Instagram fan quarter. And then all we hear in the media is that these guys, the committee, are made disca and are going to the taxpayers' money, and the taxpayers' money. You hear it everywhere. What did we waste as taxpayers' money? What did we waste? Okay, but one can say, catch a commissioner and say, if you had given another chance, you would you would have done better. Yeah, it means, Adama, some, it means see, something. When you make such a statement uh -huh. and you don't uh, give the context. Ah, me the can't answer. It was a question. And we'll be sorry. Or six. Three, we were dealing with three, uh, the three shortlisted people who were, so, uh, that's the companies that were shortlisted for the airlifting of supporters and their travels back and forth. And the old piece said, the procedure is now. Yeah, they selected three, you know. Uh, did we have, uh, did we have a, 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 a Right, so uh, uh, Kweku Asari was in a conversation with Captain Smart uh, earlier today on Adum FM. But indeed, real men do cry. But w w what, what are these tears for? Is it just a matter of being emotional, the atmosphere being too tense? I really do not have an idea, and I want to know why this happens. Is this normal at all? Something laddy. Uh, Yenene is a lawyer and well I understand I do not have something yet so I'm going to go on with the conversation indeed uh, uh, at the 2014 World Cup as head of the protocol and supporters welfare union Kukui Duasari told uh, the Jamefa Commission on the 16th day of certain that the decision to ask three travel agencies to work together was as a result of their inability to find inability to find one agency that had demonstrated the capability in meeting all the laid down criteria of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. But does this warrant any tears? Why do people cry? Or why have two people cried already? Uh, just because they sat in front of the Jamaica led uh, commission. Samson Ladi Ayanen is a lawyer and he's been to the commission himself with his client uh, before and he's joined me over the telephone. Hello, Samson, you're welcome to the program. Hi, Kevin. Really, how do you find these emotional outpour and, and the, the way events unfold at, at the commission? Is it normal? <laughs> Shakespeare says there's no art to find the mind construction in the face. Uh, when they, they get emotional, one is unable to get into their heads and their hearts and minds to be able to tell why uh, they do so. I led my client that he didn't uh, show the slightest of any such, you know, uh, uh, demeanor. Mm. So I, I cannot tell exactly, but you know, sometimes when you come under a lot of pressure and this, you are being questioned from left, right, center. Questions are being thrown at you, and uh, perhaps maybe you are just a little lost, and uh, you have no way of escape. Uh, and I'm not saying that is what may have happened in this mm. situation.
but you find that in the two instances regarding the minister, former minister, and uh, the former MP, you will find that they seem to break down at the point where they they try to justify, you know, acts which they felt that they exhibited the best of to the best of their abilities and knowledge what ought to have been done, which is now being adjudged as wrong. Because yesterday, I understand that uh, Eduasari, Kujo Eduasari, the former MP, had to admit to negligence. Uh, in the case of, uh, you know, and at the same time, he was trying to explain that, look, I did my very best and I was just doing the best that I could. I didn't know that it would come to this point. In the case of Ebu Zefri Ankara, he to, you know, trying to, you know, explain things as they went and seeking to say that he gave his all and is surprised at the accusations left, right and center that he had benefited from, you know, and so broke down. Um, apart from that, I I cannot tell why why they are, you know, they'll be crying. There's, but there's, there's no need for it. I'll say there's absolutely no basis for it. Mm. How, how it been there and the fact that you're a lawyer, is, is it perhaps the atmosphere? Maybe it's a bit too intimidating for these people. <laughs> well, I'm not over yet. I'll be back there to cross-examine one of the witnesses of the ministry, uh, Fred Daku, mm. who was a coordinator of the program, who made some allegations against my clients. So I have made that I made that request to the commission that I would need to cross-examine him. So I'm actually not done. I'll be going back there. And until the whole process is over, um, I may not know who else I may want to choose to cross-examine. Mm. So my clients are watching. They, they have uh, people who are watching and taking notes and making sure that they draw attention to things that we may need to cross-examine witnesses on. So my going there is not over yet. But what I can say is that the commission is operating on what you call a constitutional instrument. And mm. they are operating under the authority of constitutional instruments um, CI 82 and CI 82 also refers them to their general powers that every commission of inquiry should have which is a CI 65 as a lawyer I go there and I am minded by what CI 65 says I can do or not do I'm familiar with going to the court leading my clients in court so I don't feel there's an intimidating atmosphere um, even if there is I have every right to also challenge anything that goes on. My client was asked a question to define a contract. I got up to object. The judge said, oh, something, you've gotten up to object. Sorry, um, I understand you can object to what I am asking, but uh, I'm not asking your client to define the legal, give me a legal definition of um, contract. a contract. Mm. He should tell me his own layman's understanding. And so I sat back. There were times where I felt that maybe he was being... Um, it was being a bit too inquisitorial or uh, as if it was a court process that is not supposed to be like a court process. It's supposed to be relaxed. Mm. So I stepped in and I had to make a certain pleas, you know, as was re required. When my client made a statement, the judge took offense to, I had to get up, you know, and plead on his behalf. So it's, it's a very simple process. If you're familiar with going to court and giving testimonies, it shouldn't be difficult mm, but I see again like like I noted uh, during the process um, this is a situation where they invite them to come and assist it's not as if you're on trial so people should take it easy you get it and where they make the, the atmosphere as if it is a litigation then that that may not be correct but the people who are going there should understand that they are being invited to assist the Commission to get to the truth of the fact as to why uh, the things that happened happened. They shouldn't go there feeling as if they are on trial. If they feel as if they are on trial, mm. then they will feel the pressure and they would want to say so much. They want to say things that they may not be even required to say. And they should be listening to their lawyers too. It will be well with them. I see. Thank you very much, Samson, for that. You're welcome. Well, I, ho I hope those uh, yet to... Uh, visits the commission have uh, taken a word or two
from uh, what Thompson has said so far. So you're just supposed to help the commission uh, come out with its, its findings. It's not a court proceeding. Now, uh, on Facebook, though, Akuko Orison Ennis commenting on the tear shirt by Akuko Iduasari uh, said that, I wonder uh, if when they are spending the money, uh, they don't shed tears, but when it's time to account for it, then they are crying shame unto sh they are crying shame unto them. Good morning, Benjilo Sabtrick says. Now crying has become a strategy for uh oh no 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 no. I move on to Bright Oscar Kelly Adam who says, looking at the situation, when the NPP comes into power, they are going to set up another committee that will look into this matter again. A dementia Ebenezer says another weeping. Weep to carries all your sh uh, to carry all your shame away. I see. Uh, Thomas Romeo Akonai says thanks to Montari and KP Boating. We are born to Benjamin from Achime Buaka says Ghanaians are not interested in Kojo Eduasari's testimony of tears. They can't deceive us anymore with their Tom and Jerry tactics. We want to see pure accountability and value for money now. Good morning to Kofi Bafi. Okay, Monty Benjamin, I'm grateful for your comment, but you can't do that here. Abdul Razak Yubaji says, There are several reasons that can make someone cry to issues. Please do not make false judgments. Do not insult anyone. Rather, uh, face the point. Mukhtar Mushud says, He was nominated by Elvis Efria and Craft for Shedding Crocodile. Oh, oh, come on. Timothy Crimson says, um, I'll move on to... And Kuma Emmanuel, who says, you see, they've spent uh, that whooping amount of money just for nothing. Yeah, I was saying, he said, this same person has been promote, promoted to supervise uh, the uh, youth enterprise initiative with a fund of 10 million Ghana cities. Fuseini Idi Kulunku says, they have spent this huge sum of money and want to go free. Peter Soka says, those people deserve serious punishment. Ghana is not for jokes. Dahmani Abdul Karim says, Allah will judge them all. Meanwhile, Patrick Dankwa is asking, crying will not solve the issues. We do not need them. Why? Abotiri Awongo Abraham says, please, let's take a serious look on the problems that are happening in the Black Stars to ensure that Ghanaians have interest in the team to change uh, the lost feeling. The coach, hmm. Felix Ponyo says, so tears have become the order of the day. huh? Rocky Athol, if they don't bring back our money, any projects they will use the money for will burn to ashes. Let's wait for uh, the commission to, to give us some findings before we, we, we judge. But Cindy Akon says, why will they be wasting the, tax, the taxpayers' money like water flowing in baskets? Anyway, and then I'll end with Redwan Osman, who says, this guy is fine. They think their crocodile tears can save them. This is so immature. It's been a long time I heard that one. But I'm totally grateful for your comments there. I'll see you again on midday on News Today. That'll be all from me. This are, my name is Kemini Nyamani. Amano, this has been Mr. Desk. Good morning.